Have a nice day and be safe. I will. Yep, that's me. My name's Hamish, but people refer to me as the Diaper. Why? Well, let me tell you a story of how I got that name. December 28th, 1879. Windsor was a nightmare to say the least in Scotland, though that didn't stop our willies from freezing. Ooh, but the blue red frames. <coughs> Anyways, it had been a year since the newly bridge over the Firth of Tay opened to the railway, after we were requested by the North British Railway to link Edinburgh and Aberdeen. They called upon one of Yorkshire's finest, Thomas Crouch. Anyways, back to the story. I remembered that steep incline when I pulled into Dundee, and I met up with Angus, who had a bit of a mood that morning. Morning, Angus! Morning, you cunt! Jeez, I always said morning. It's this stupid incline. When are they ever gonna fax it? Hold your leash. It's only a wee little hill. Speak for yourself, lad. Anyways, I'm already ten minutes late. Anyways, as I watched Angus climb the bank, I stared at that bridge. It's great to know that we can travel further up north from Edinburgh, but the passengers are getting complaints about the ride quality when we're going up the bridge. Hey, I couldn't barely stand on the footplate while being rocked around. <sighs> Anyways, let's not worry now. I'm sure nothing's bad's gonna happen. I mean, it's only been a year. Stupid fucking gradient caused me fucking delays. Stupid fucking weather. Freezing my way off. Fuck me life. Night rolled in. Me and Dougal were the last two trains to cross to the north. Dougal was frosted to take a passenger train from Edinburgh to Aberdeen first, whilst I was coming up from the western region later that night with a mail, along with our several mound passengers. Well, why did my driver have to stop? Just to catch a bloody pheasant! Beauty, ain't she? I can make this my evening dinner! As the night goes on, the weather had turned to the west. Rain started to pour on the first day. The bridge groaned from the force of the wind and the sea became rougher by the minute. Right, I'll go get the token. Okay, I've got the token. Let's get going. Did you hear that? It's coming up from underneath the bridge. I do hear it, my boy. I fear this bridge may not hold itself against this weather. Whoa! Whoa! 
Holy shit, what the fuck? My wheel, I can't even hold on. My god, that was terrifying. You could say that again. I nearly dropped my can of iron brew. At least the passengers are okay. Though from the sound of where it was coming from behind, they're really scared. Ugh. Anyways, I don't think that bridge is going to be surviving the storm. Best we stay in the shed until it clears. I'll go get the token. Right, let's go. Morning broke of the 1st of Tay. The news spread quickly of my disappearance and the collapse of the bridge. Many ships rushed to the scene of the disaster to see if they could rescue any survivors. Sadly, no one survived. Dougal was on the scene as well, clearing up the bits of debris, but he was devastated. He was not happy with all of this. He missed me. That's a bit weird. People were devastated and were shocked. Thomas Birch heard all the news as well. He was in absolute despair and trembled in sorrow. The 
investigators and police inspected the wreckage. They noted the pillars had a lot of cracks in them, and they noticed that they had a lot of fatigue and weathering in the pillars. In April 1880, the townsfolk and my shedmates were in rejoice. I was alive, but I was in bad shape. My boiler was rusted, and my frames and joints were all twisted. Though this gave an opportunity for an inspection to see what happened to us on the bridge. Then came the court of inquiry of June 1880. Thomas Bouch and his other partners came to witness the unveiling of these evidence. First, documents were shown that Boucher's design was majorly flawed in both durability under heavy wind loading and his research for designing the bridge. He was judged upon his use of outdated materials instead of newer ones to use on the metal pillars, and his views towards construction and maintenance. It was noted that during maintenance there were cracks formed in the metal braces and pillars. Workmen used their bowman's egg which was a sort of putty, to fill in the cracks. They said it wasn't to strengthen the structure, but more just to fill in the gaps. This substance is not ideal, because it would crack again if there was any substantial vibration. And who thought of that was a good idea, huh? To put on a railway bridge! Anyways, after the court, the townsfolk and community blamed entirely on Thomas Boach. Though, to be fair, he wasn't alone on the disaster. Oi! Who are you talking to, you wee prick? Oi, get a move on, you're blocking the main line! Oh, sorry! Anyways, the tape bridge was a major design flaw from the very beginning. Thomas Bouch didn't take into consideration of the wind loading, nor did he take into account of using good material. Furthermore, his inspector was also a part of this, as he could have tested the wind loading, but never got the chance. Overall, taking on an extreme engineering project has its ups and downs, and even if it goes wrong, people can learn from their mistakes and learn from their lessons, so that they can improve on their practices for the future. Anyways, I'd best be off. See you later, you weak cunts! <laughs>